Okay, carbon monoxide can be made in the lab by heating zinc and calcium carbonate, giving you a nice equation for that. It's redox. Which element has been oxidised, which has been reduced? So let's have a look at this. Zinc is an element here, so it's going to be zero. Calcium carbonate, so remember the carbonate iron is CO3 to minus. Calcium in group two has got to be plus two. Oxygen is always, well, pretty much always minus two, um, unless it's in a peroxide deposit normally. So that means that carbon is going to be plus four. The quick way to work, you know, you can work it out all together. Just remember carbon, it's CO3, two minus, so carbon's got to be plus four if oxygen's minus two to get it to work. Zinc here is going to be plus two. Oxygen is still going to be minus two, calcium plus two, oxygen minus two. Carbon in carbon monoxide is going to be plus two because oxygen is going to be minus two. So which one's oxidized? Well, looking like it's going to be zinc because zinc has gone from zero to plus two. What element has been reduced? Uh, do, 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 do. That is looking to me like carbon because it has gone from plus four to plus two here. Don't forget your, to put your pluses in as well. So don't just put four, plus four, yeah? Right, so this one, um, you may freak out a little bit, but don't, it's actually quite straightforward from the information they're giving you. Carbon monoxide contains a triple bond. And includes a dated covalent bond. Construct a dot and cross diagram to show the outer electron pair. So let's go for it. I've got carbon bonded with oxygen, and I know it's a triple bond, so I've got a normal double bond, and then I've got a dated covalent bond. Right, who's got the most electrons out of carbon and oxygen? Carbon's in group four, oxygen's in group six, it's got to be oxygen. So likelihood is that dated bonds come from oxygen. So the crosses are oxygens, one, two, three, four, four crosses. So oxygen needs another two crosses to give it its six electrons. Carbon's put two in, he's in group four, so he's got another two remaining like. So count them all up and you'll find that both atoms have eight electrons. So remember the clues in the question. Right, so they've given me uh, the apparatus that they've done that. That's all okay. They've got the zinc and their calcium carbonate in their test tube. They're heating it nicely. Got their gas syringe. All's happy. I just put the equation up there to remind us. Um, a mixture containing zinc and calcium carbonate is heated strongly. And collected the gas. And I repeated the experiment. Calculate the maximum volume of carbon oxide that could be produced, measured at room temperature and pressure. Okay, so notice they've given me the mass of both the reactant of both reactants. So one of them looks like it's going to be in excess. So we need to work out the moles of both of these guys. So let's do that. Give yourself a bit more space. Okay. So here we go. Um, we are going to have Moles of zinc, first of all, is going to be the mass 0.27 divided by the relative atomic mass 65.4. That gives me 0.0041 moles. Let's do calcium carbonate. That is going to be 0.38 divided by the molar mass of calcium carbonate is a nice 100. So that gives me 0.038. So the zinc is in excess. Yep, got too much of it. It's a one-to-one -one reaction, nice and easy. I've got more of that than that. So some of that's going to be unreacted. All of this, we hope, is going to react to produce carbon dioxide. So how many moles of carbon dioxide am I going to make? Well, it's going to be the same as that, 0.0038. To find the volume, it's going to be 0.0038 times by 24 
thousand remember that number is on your data sheet um, and that gives you 91 centimeters cubed so the student did not obtain the volume of gas predicted now interestingly it doesn't tell us he got too much or too little it just says he didn't get what he expected so we need to think both ways Apart from further repeats, suggest two improvements to the practical procedure that would allow the student to obtain a more accurate result. Well, the first one was to be to make sure the reaction has gone to completion is to heat until the syringe stops moving. He's heated it for two minutes. Maybe the reaction hasn't been completed by then. We don't know. So maybe keep heating it until the syringe stops moving and then we know no more gas is being produced. The second one is a hot gas has a higher volume than a cold gas. If he's heated it with bulk burner, that carbon dioxide is going to be hot. So he needs to let the apparatus cool down before taking his final volume of carbon dioxide gas. So, uh, two things. Heat until the syringe stop moving and then let the apparatus cool down before taking the final volume. Right, so for the next week you're going to draw a graph. Well, please excuse this appalling graph. Um, but hopefully you get the idea. The main thing to point, apart from all these crazy lines which the board has decided to draw, um, which of course shouldn't be there at all, um, because there are these big numbers. So that should just be one straight curve all the way through the point nicely. So I'll try and just sort that out. Um, not the easiest of pieces of apparatus to draw a straight line, but hopefully you get the point. So a nice smooth curve through the point, you'll notice that this uh, data point looks a bit dodgy, so don't draw your line through there. Um, it then wants you to work out the tangent at 50, so you go to 50, you draw a nice straight line with your ruler, again I would do it but the ball goes mad if I do this, um, draw a nice straight line and then you take uh, the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance, make your line as big as you can because it minimises on there, don't just do a little tangent you do a little triangle like that you'll get loads of errors try and do a big one um, and then the errors will uh, be much smaller 